Hello everybody, this is Bill McFadden from TomePure.com and in this video we're going to take a, a regular Cubase file with 11 tracks and a reverb and we're going to convert it to Adobe Atmos. So the first thing we're going to do is create a group track. So we'll go to Project Group. And we're going to make it a 714. And we're going to name it uh, Atmos Group Bus. Now, one of the things you need to make sure for this to work is that your DAW has a buffer size of 512. And also in the project menu, you need to make sure you're at 48 kilohertz. And I'll go ahead and do 24 bits. OK, so this is the track we're going to convert. So let's go ahead and play it through. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is route the audio tracks or instrument tracks, in this case, to the Atmos bus that we just created. So we'll go back to the mixer. I will select the tracks. So we have a harp. I'm going to even select the, uh, the Symphony I.O. reverb. So I selected all those tracks. Then we're going to go and link them, quick link. Then we'll go to the routing and we'll change it to the Atmos group bus. Okay, so that's the next step. And then, oh, notice that our panning changed when we did that. We have three little dots here. And if I click on this one here, then notice we have a multi-panner that comes up. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is insert the Dolby Atmos plugin in the Atmos bus. So here's our Atmos bus. So I'll just search for Dolby renderer for Dolby Atmos. Okay, so we have that taken care of now. And then we're going to go to Project Menu and select the ADM authoring for Dolby Atmos. And in this one, we'll hit the drop down menu and select renderer for Dolby Atmos. Okay. Now we are ready to add our bed and objects. So the bed basically um, doesn't have any positioning like the objects do. It's sort of static. And since all we have is stereo tracks, we'll go ahead and input a stereo bed. In particular, I'm going to choose the reverb itself as the bed. And then as far as the objects, we have 11 of those. We'll make those the instruments. So I'll go ahead and bump that up to 11. And then add those objects. And then we will go ahead and start selecting them. So I'm just going to go from top to bottom. We have a soft piano, a horn. And notice they'll say in use after we select them. So 
So there we have them all filled. And the next thing we're going to do, now that we have the beds and the object, or the bed and the objects, we'll go ahead and position the objects. So say we click on the harp, and this multi-panner comes up if I click here. I get the uh, rear view. Here I have the top view. So let's go ahead and position the harp to the left. Actually, I can move that over there right there. So the reason we have two little dots is because everything's stereo. So we have left channel and right channel for the harp, as we will for the other 10 instruments. So we've got the harp on the left of our theater, the left front. Okay, then. We'll go ahead and move to the violin. Oh, I have everything linked, so we're doing everything at once. Let's unlink them. Okay, so now going to the, now we're at the violin. You can see right up here, violin one. And we'll go ahead and move that to the right. Okay, I'm just trying to get some separation going. And then for the violin two, let's move that. To the middle there, you can better see here in the grid, we're in the middle. So we've got the left and right front, now we're working on the mids. And let's do the viola. And we'll move that to the mid right. And then we have the celli. Let's move that to the rear. Okay. And then after the celli, we'll do the bases and move those to the rear, to the right. There we go. And then we have a flute. And just for the heck of it, let's uh, go. Now these lie to go up and down, so we'll move the flute. To the top left, you can see here, we've got the flute on the left at the top. And then we'll go ahead and move the B-flat clarinet to the right. And we'll, we'll also move that up, let's see, like so. And then we have a bassoon. Let's go ahead and move that up as well. And let's sort of make it in the upper mid. Keep a little separation showing here. And uh, and the horn, let's move that to the right. And let's move it into the middle upper room, just to get spatial separation. And then the uh, piano, last instrument, let's move that to the back. And then we will move it up. Actually, with for the just variety, let's go ahead and have one channel to the rear right and one channel to the rear left.
There we go. Okay, so we've positioned our objects. So now we are ready to, let's go back to the ADM authoring for Dolby and uh, export it because we have everything moved. Now I'll just leave these as mid. You can do far, near. So I'll just leave them for mid. And then we'll go ahead and export the ADM file. And I'll go ahead and export it. Actually, let's call it 6122. And we'll call it Dolby. Test. So the file that we're exporting, exporting is going to be Adobe Atmos file. And you just can't play it on your desktop, whether it's Windows or uh, PC or Windows or Mac. But there is a program which for quality control you really need to get so you can see what's going on with your Adobe Atmos master file. And that's called the Adobe Atmos renderer. It's by Avid. It's part of the Adobe Atmos production suite. There's also Adobe Atmos master suite, which is three times more expensive or more than three times as expensive. So I've invoked the program. I'm now going to open the master file that we just created in Cubase 12. And notice I can then play it here. Actually, Okay, let's go ahead and play it. So as it was playing, if you, you've noticed all of those positions that we, where we positioned all the various instruments, they all show up. And notice I can uh, solo by, I can mute the objects. Let's go ahead and replay it. So all we're hearing now is the reverb because the reverb was in the bed. Now I'll just, I'll mute the uh, bed and then let's play it. Get the attenuation up a little bit. So notice when we play it, just the beds, we've, or we, we muted the beds, we're playing just the objects, then uh, you don't hear the reverb in the instruments. Okay, now with. So now that we have this, we're playing it, we see the all of the various positions that we 
place the objects in. Now we can, the beauty of this Adobe MS Renderer is we can render it, we can export it to an MP4 file, which is actually a Adobe Atmos file. And let's see, we'll go ahead and export it to the same directory that we have our master wave file. And this file we can play on our desktop. So for example, if I go to my desktop and I go, let's go ahead and uh, open with, and what I'm going to open it up with is since I'm on a Mac, the music app. Actually, music.app. There it is. And I can actually listen to it on my. Now, not, not only that, but now that we have this file exported, I can then go over to my Adobe Atmos system in my living room, and I can play the same MP4 file that we just played that was rendered by the Adobe Atmos renderer by Avid, and it will actually play in Adobe Atmos in my living room. So I will hear all of the positioning that we did of all of those various instruments. And you could also send that file to various other media like Apple Music, uh, Tidal, and other music distributors and actually convert your music to Dolby Atmos to play on those systems. And it's becoming more popular. Uh, Logic Pro X now has Dolby Atmos built in as well. But anyway, this is just a fairly quick video to show you how to get started with Dolby Atmos. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. The instruments that were being used were from the Prime Edition of the Vienna Symphonic Library. So I will leave a link as to how you can purchase those if you want to get a, a fantastic library and get into the Vienna Symphonic Library world. So this is Bill McFadden signing off from Tone Pure Music.